Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beach Bum Book Room. Thank you all for joining me again today. So my channel is mostly about cozy mystery books with some other stuff from time to time. And today I wanted to talk about the 2020 December cozy releases. There is a lot more December releases than last month in November. Remember to comment below, what are you reading? Remember to stop, hit the subscription, hit the notification bell, because that's going to tell you when I put out new videos each week. I'm going to try to stick to a schedule of Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And so far, y'all, I am one for one. Yes. Of course, it's only been one week, but I'm still celebrating. So let's get started in three, two, one, go. book is by a author that is very very popular in the cozy world we all love her is ellie alexander it is book 12 in the big shop mystery series the book is called chill to the bone it'll be right here if you watch other booktubers and they focus on cozy mysteries you will have heard a bunch about this particularly there's a very very awesome booktuber that focused on cozy mysteries named Cortagonist, and i think that this is probably a series that i've heard her talk about numerous times because it is great so if you haven't checked out Cortagonist after this video make sure you wait till after this video and then go check her out and subscribe because she is great so the main character in this series is jules capshaw she is an employee at family tort bake shop it's a small town in oregon um, Ashland, Oregon. I believe it's a fictional town, Ashland, Oregon. So the this particular book says, the deep freeze has thawed in Ashland, Oregon, and Tor is gearing up for a busy spring. When a surprise opportunity to launch a pop-up ice cream shop comes her way, Jules jumps at the chance to showcase Tor's signature ice drinks and cold custards. But selling the desserts of her dreams comes at a price. And before she knows it, Jules' life swirls into a nightmare. Love it. Not that it swirls into nightmare. I don't love that. I love the plate. Okay. One of the town's most colorful characters, a street performer. Oh my gosh. I'm so into this, this book right now. <sighs> One of the town's most colorful characters, a street performer known for wearing capes and a cone-shaped hat, turns up dead. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was just getting into you. I love that character already. I've never met him, but I like him. Uh, turns up dead at Tort 2.0 is just as Tort 2.0 is set to open its doors. Can Jules get the scoop on what happened to the wizard, oh, poor wizard, of Ashland before her new business venture reaches a chilling conclusion? I'm, I, I read all that series anyways, but I'm really excited about that new release. The next one being released is book two in the Woman of World War II mystery series is by Tessa Arland. The book is called Poppy Redfern and the Fatal Flyers. It'll be right here. I actually just read the first book maybe about, well, in November. Loved it. I loved Poppy. The, the author did a great job. The writing style was fabulous. The, the mystery was written well. I really enjoyed it. So I'm super excited about this next one coming out. The main character, Poppy, is a World War II air warden. So she goes to... Um, warn and bring to safety people in the event of airstrikes in her small community or her small village. The synopsis says, you'll love this character so much. You will. That is totally true. Poppy Redfern is back on the case when two female fire, fire, female fighter pilots take a fatal dive in an all new woman of world war II mystery. It is the late autumn of 1942. Our heroine, Poppy Redfern, is thoroughly immersed in her new job as a scriptwriter at the London Crown Film Unit. She took this job at the very end of the first book, which produces short films featuring British civilians who perform acts of valor and heroism in wartime. So cool. After weeks of typing, copying, and sharpening pencils, Poppy is thrilled to receive her first solo script project, a 15-minute film about the air transport auxiliary known as Atta Girls, a group of female civilians have, who have been trained to pilot planes from factories to military airfields all over Britain. Oh, this is so cool. I'm so excited about this. Poppy could not be more excited to spend time with these amazing, amazing ladies. I don't blame her. They sound really intriguing. But she never expects to see one of the best pilots die in what is being labeled an accident. When another Atta girl meets a similar fate, Poppy and her American fighter, fi fighter pilot boyfriend Griff 
who we met in book one. He's really cute. Believe foul play may be at work. They soon realize that a murder with a desire for revenge is dead set on grounding the Atta girls for good. So excited about that one. The next book is the eighth book in the Fixer Upper Mystery series by Kate uh, Carlisle. I've actually never read this series, but somebody actually on here just recommended it to me. So it's definitely been bumped up in my TBR or recommended this author. Maybe, maybe she has more than one series. I've never read anything by her, but somebody on here recommended this author specifically. So I will definitely look into her and thank you for the recommendation. The main character in this particular series, the Fixer Upper series, is Shannon Hammer. She is a um, home renovator and repair contractor in a small seaside town in Northern California. The book is called Premeditated Mortar. <laughs> I like that one. The cover will be right here. <laughs> the synopsis says, Shannon Hammer is about to embark on one of the biggest projects of her career. Her best friend, Jane Hennessy, has purchased one has purchased one wing of the Gables, formerly the Old State Insane Asylum, located on the hillside two miles northeast of Lighthouse Cove. Would you stay in an insane asylum? Even if it was remodeled into the most luxurious place, I don't know that I could stay there without worrying about nightmares. And I'm such a scaredy cat, y'all. Would you let me know if you would stay there? Jane plans to turn her section into a small luxury hotel complete with 20 ocean view rooms, a spa, and a restaurant. Sounds lovely. Still don't know if I could see there. <laughs> Shannon is raring to get started to the, um, on the enormous project and is shocked when a group of unruly protesters shows up at the groundbreaking ceremony and wreaks havoc. She's even more freaked out when someone pushes her into a pit of bricks in a closed-off room of the asylum. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Despite her close call, Shannon wants nothing more than to get back to work until she finds a body not far from where she was pushed. Now Shannon is determined to get to the bottom of the goings-on at the gable, even if it kills her. Woo! That one sounds, that book sounds really intriguing. I might have to, I, I, I like to read them in order or at least the first book first. I usually try to read my series in order, but I'll tell you that I've been listening to more audiobooks lately because I crochet a lot, and sometimes the audiobooks, I, I, I don't have the luxury of reading them all in order, so I have gotten better about that, but I definitely want to read book one before I read anything else, so I will be checking that out. The next one is the second book in the first edition library mystery series by Marty Gate. The, mur the book is called Murder is a Must. It'll be right here. The main character is Haley Burke. She's a curator of the first edition society's library in Bath, England. It says Haley Burke, curator of London Fulling's collection of first edition mysteries, is setting her is settling into her new position at the first edition library in Middle Bank House. She's even made more progress with Lady Fowling's former secretary, the Honorary Miss Wolger. The, the women are busily preparing for an exposition that will showcase Lady Fowling's life and letters. Haley knows the exposition is a huge undertaking and decides, against her better judgment, to hire Una Atherton, her former boss from the Jane Austen Center, to help with the planning. Una is known for being difficult, but all seems to be going swimmingly until she and Haley uncover a one-page letter that alludes to a priceless edition of Murder Must Advertise, signed by several Golden Age of Mystery authors. Una feels this book could be the focal point of the exposition and becomes obsessed with finding it. When they find clues that appear to point to the book being somewhere in the first edition library, Una is certain she's unraveled the mystery and texts Haley the good news. But upon arriving back at Middlebank, Haley finds her old boss dead at the bottom of the stairs. Did her discovery of the rare book get her killed, or was it some angry shadows from her past? Haley must read between the lines to catch a malicious murder. Interesting. I actually have the first book on my TBR, so I'm looking forward to that. The next one is the 13th book in the Josie Prescott Antiques Mystery Series. It is by Jane K. Cleland. It's called Hidden Treasures. It'll be right here. The main character is Josie Prescott. She's an antiques dealer in New Hampshire. 
I really like the cover on this one. It says, when antiques expert Josie Prescott finds a mysterious trunk, no one thinks it could lead to murder. Josie, the owner of Prescott's Antiques and Auctions, and her new husband, Ty, have finally found their dream home, a Victorian beauty on the beach in the town of Rocky Point known as the Gingerbread House. It was recently vacated by Maudie Wilson, an aging widow whose concerned nieces have moved her into a nearby assisted living facility. Josie befriends Maudie, who seems surprisingly sharp, considering her family's doubts about her soundness of mind. As Josie and Ty joyfully began renovations on the gingerbread house, the nieces report that Maudie, in her forgetfulness, may have left behind an old trunk, which she's desperate to get back. Sure enough, Josie finds the trunk inside a hidden compartment, and within it, a jewel-encrusted box holding a sculpture of a cat. Ooh, this is getting interesting. Josie can understand the sense of urgency about getting the objects back. They look valuable, and not just in the sentimental sense. But when Josie goes to return the box to Maudie, the woman has vanished. And, the flo- and on the floor of her empty apartment lies a corpse, a woman bludgeoned to death. Sick with worry for Maudie's safety, uh, yeah, <laughs> Josie begins to piece together the clues to the murder. Everyone around her seems to want to pitch in from Maudie's family to the receptionist at the facility to the young couple helping Josie with renovations. But the but with the killer so close to home, Josie has to be on her guard. Ooh, intriguing. Hey, right, so the next one, I love this series. The next one is the sixth book in the Daisy Tea Garden series by Karen Rose Smith. It is called Murder with Oolong Tea. It is right here. The main character in this is Daisy Swanson. She is a widow and a mom and her aunt Iris. They are the owners of a tea house in Amish country. It is in Pennsylvania. This book says, the faculty of Willow Creek High School are having a get together after the spring concert with refreshments provided, refreshments provided courtesy of Daisy's Tea Garden. Oolong tea and chocolate biscuits are just what the staff needs to help them unwind from Althea Higgins' demanding curriculum. Her lessons on such controversial topics as school uniforms and underqualified substitute teachers are earning her an F from her colleagues. But a failing grade was preferable to Althea falling victim to foul play. Daisy was there when her body was discovered in the swimming pool, murdered by strangulation. Althea was certainly a strict, opinionated task master, unliked by both teachers and students, but would any of them actually kill her? As Daisy starts asking questions, she gets a real education in Althea's history, discovering more than enough enemies with more than enough motives to cancel her classes permanently. This series also includes recipes. I love this series. I've read, I, I'm up to date on it. I enjoy it. I've liked every single one. I'm totally going to check that one out. The next one is the fourth book in the Cat Cafe mystery series it is by Kate Conte. It's called A Whisker of a Doubt. It'll be right here. I've actually never uh, read this particular series. The main character is Maddie James. She is a cat cafe owner. This series takes place in Daybreak Island, Massachusetts. The holiday season on Daybreak Island is a mixed bag for Maddie James. On the one hand, her Christmas spirit is in the doghouse after a breakup. On the other, she's busy enough that she doesn't have to pretend to be Mary. Business at her cat cafe is booming, and Maddie's caretaking of a feral cat colony in one of the area's wealthiest communities only helps her bottom line. But tensions become, but tensions between the homeowners and animal activists are escalating to catastrophic levels, and before long, a body is found in a snowbank. To prove that her accused friend is innocent of the crime, Maddie will have to prowl the island for clues to the real killer before everyone on the island goes completely hysterical and more than nine lives are lost. The next one is the third book in the Haunted Craft Mystery Series by Rose Pressy. I read another one of Rose Pressy. I've never read this, but I've read um, another series by Rose Pressy. Really enjoyed it. This one, this particular book that's being released is called Murder Can Haunt Your Handiwork. It'll be right here. It says, rising up against the beautiful backdrop of Blue Ridge Mountains, the Bitmore Estate is a magnificent mansion in Asheville, North Carolina, built as a summer home for George Washington Vanderbilt. Yes, of those Vanderbilts. During the Gilded Age. Nowadays, it's the site of an annual craft fair. Unfortunately, it's also about to become a crime scene. 
Celeste is hard to miss as she pulls up with her pink and white Shasta trailer and adorable Chihuahua, Van Gogh. Love it, Van for short. But before she can show off her artwork at the fair, a tour guide is found strangled by a velvet rope barrier and a valuable painting goes missing. With a rogue gallery of sketchy suspects, Celeste welcomes the help of a pair of handsome detectives and a ghost with a special interest in the case. This says it includes tips and recipes. I'm assuming arts and craft tips um, and recipes. Sounds pretty interesting. Again, I've read something else by Rose Presley, but I have not read any of these. Let me know if you have and if I should put them on my TBR. The next one is the third book in the Grace Church Mystery Series is by Kathy Devini. The main character is Fa Father Robert Vickers in Seattle, Washington. It's called Death on Sacred Ground. It'll be right here. I really enjoy books religious figures as the sleuth, uh, a nun, a priest, a pastor, a father, a rabbi, anything like that. I, I just, I usually enjoy them. I, I enjoy the TV shows are like that too, like Father Brown, uh, Father, uh, who was that? Downing, Darling. It was like an 80s. I just, I really, really enjoy this. So, this is one I'll probably look into. It says, Father Robert Vickers, the rector of Seattle Grace's, Seattle's Grace Parish, has returned from his honeymoon. Now he's dreaming about an early retirement, encouraged by the skills of the woman who substituted in his absence. His dreams are dashed by two murders in the nearby homeless jungle. Lester, his formerly homeless employee, may be a suspect. And on top of that, his plan to develop part of the church's property is caught in a crossfire of environmental low-income housing and um, gentrification advocates. Can he hang on long enough to get through the crisis and ensure that the church and community are standing on sacred ground? See, that sounds so good. Next book is the second one in the Amish Matchmaker series, and I actually just read it and is four cups of coffee, y'all. It was so good. It is by Amanda Flower, who I have gushed about before. I love her. The main character in this is Millie Fisher. The book is called Courting Can Be a Killer. It'll be right here. She is uh, Millie Fisher. Our main character is a widow. She has now a matchmaker. She has come back to her hometown of Harvest, Ohio, which is where the Amish Candy Shop series takes place. And I have talked about that series because it is in my list of all time favorites. And this one is, is starting to just um, enter that list as well. I loved it. It says the, it says between mining a pair of rambunctious goats, true, uh, meeting Meetings with her quilting circle and the ma and matchmaking, Millie Fisher has plenty to keep her busy throughout her golden years. But the witty widow also makes time to solve the the odd murder. Some Amish men don't know what's good for them. That's what Mich Millie Fisher told herself when young Ben Bauman uh, sets his heart on marrying Tess Lieb. When Tess's father refusing to give his blessing and Texas as Tess's ex-boyfriend being a wet blanket, the hapless couple was bound to butt heads more than Millie's goats. <laughs> but when Ben tra tragically dies in a mysterious fire, Millie wonders if someone in her hometown of Harvest, Ohio wanted Ben out of the wedding picture altogether. With the help of her quilting buddies and her outspoken English friend Lois, love her, Millie is determined to patch together all the clues without ever even dropping a stitch. She, she only hopes it won't be the death of her. So good, y'all. Totally look into that one. The next one is the ninth book in the Sarah Winston Garage Sale Mystery Series is by Sherry Harris. The book is called Absence of Alice. It'll be right here. For bark and hunter extraordinaire Sarah Winston, starting over, starting life over in Ellington, Massachusetts, has been a true to trash, true trash to treasure success story. Except when there's a run on dead bodies, I would say. <laughs> Sarah's latest client, Alice Crandall, is sure she has a fortune of antiques on her hands. She has already gotten a generous offer for the whole lot before her garage sale has even begun. But she thinks she can earn more with Sarah's expert help. The problem is that while Sarah's sorting through items from decades past, her landlady Stella faces a clear and present danger. Stella's kidnapper has contacted Sarah with a set of instructions and don't call the police is top on the list. It's always top on the list, right? Always in any kidnap situation, don't call the police. But they didn't say anything about Sarah's friend Harriet, who happens to be a former FBI hostage negotiator. What a friend to have in this situation, right? 
Oh, that sounds really intriguing. So the next one and the last one is the sixth book in the Jamie Bond mystery series by Gemma Holliday. It's called Deadly Bond. It is right here. Her name is Bond. Jamie Bond. Love that. Her name is Bond. Jamie Bond. And her life has never been more dangerous. Clients are usually beating down LA Pride of Investigator Jamie Bond's door, looking to hire her and her crew of Bond girls. But lately, business has been slow, causing Jamie to take on some unusual clients. Case in point, the aging rock star who is sure his young alien enthusiast wife is cheating on him, while Jamie has a feeling three decades of rock and roll may have clouded his vision. She takes the case anyway. Hey, money is money, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Jamie, you're right. Only when her client ends up dead under suspicious circumstances, Jamie is rethinking her career choices. I can see that. I get it. Especially when a second band member hires her, this time to put to rest an argument over the rights to the band's one-hit song, Hot Waitress. The song was mildly popular in the 80s, and after being recently used in a millennial AIM TV commercial, it started generating big royalties, possibly big enough to kill over. Did the drummer with a temper finally snuff off his bandmate or was it the guitarist with a secret or the keyboard player with a decades long grudge? Or did the younger wife simply decide she'd make out better as a widow than a divorcee? Between more suspects than she can trail, sounds like it, a side case involving frisky senior citizens, ooh, and two hot men both vying for her attention and demanding a decision, Jamie has more than she can handle. It sounds like it, Jamie. Can she make it out alive or will this be the case that finally breaks her? That's going on my TBR. I'll have to figure out what the first book in this series is. This is the sixth one. So that, y'all, is the mysteries that are being released in December. So there was quite a few that sound like really, really great reads. I hope I added to your TBR. Until next time, may all your future reads be five stars. Bye, everyone.